See, got him. This in my you arm. got him? You didn't break any? I nope. It broke zero. It broke zero? Good. It's good numbers. Thank you. Alright, let's go out here. <laughs> you ready, Bear? The lady, uh, there was some lady, I guess, giving away. Uh... I thought her so funny. Hey, girlies. Hey, sweetheart. How many babies is there again? There are six. My favorite one is Curly the black. girls unite. <laughs> I feel them all summer long. <laughs> there is days that I walk outside in the humidity and I can feel my hair growing. And that's like it's growing big. <laughs> She yeah, said she had to come back and meet the curly hey, girl. <laughs> hey Gerard, what's up brother? Hi baby. Toby Hi, touched Gerard's baby. nose. It feels yeah. so weird. Ah. Hey Clem. I thought you said Manny. Hey girl. What? Yeah, so I'm noticing Clem's teats are showing. And so we've been wondering if she was actually pregnant. There's no electric light on this? I'm feeling, no there's not electric. Thanks. And I'm okay. feeling really a lot better seeing those teats showing. I think she must be getting a lot closer. He wants me because he's my horse. Oh, he has it. He wants you. Hey, Luke. Hey, Luke. Oh, just so good. He's not sure what to think about this camera. Is that horse? All right, our friends, Pine Knot. Hello. Is it farm or homestead? Farm. It should be Pine homestead Knot. because I tell him all the time, homestead's easier. <laughs> I says Roots of Refuge Farm too, and yeah. like I'm always like Hobby Farm. Let's clarify, yeah. <laughs> like we're not real farmers, yeah. but they're down here actually uh, getting their trailer that we've been in our crazy schedules, like bouncing yeah. back and You've forth, trying, for it's, uh, trying to get back. But uh, we got to hang out with them all morning, and eat yes. some breakfast, and walk Thank around the farm. Thank you for the, the breakfast; yeah. was wonderful. <laughs> it's really awesome. We were talking about how rich the YouTube community is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started their channel after the shindig last yeah, year. In May, yeah. And uh, they have a lot going on. They've been on our vlog before when we went by their house. So yeah. definitely check them out. The people that we have met that we would have never met. I mean, I feel like since May, I have got best friends yeah. that I never, you know, I didn't have that before. So yeah. it's that's all worth it. Awesome. You know, it is. Well, so, thank you guys. It's awesome get to spend the morning with y'all. Hey all, it's the next morning. So we had a really great visit with our friends yesterday. So great in fact that I only shot like two minutes worth of video. So now uh, the next day I thought, well I'll just shoot a video this morning and I woke up to rain, lots of rain. Um, it's actually kind of like just a drizzle right now, which the farm looks happy to have it. The leaves are changing, the chickens are out. So the garden still actually has a lot of green in it, but when you get up close, it's, it's all dying. And though I love this view, my job today is in the house. So I actually wasn't feeling great this weekend, which means that I had picked all of these peppers and I hadn't done anything with them yet, which is not great. You typically want to get things preserved like pretty quickly. However, uh, they were pretty underripe, so I did have a little bit of time. And today, this morning, I am devoting myself to preserving peppers. <laughs> Now this is where I struggle in vlogging the homestead life, is sharing the days in the kitchen, which there are a lot of them, um, but usually I'm doing these busy tasks and I wanna share with you and kinda of show you what I'm doing, but it gets to be a lot to video. So I'm gonna show you kinda of what I'm doing today and give you a brief overview. This is not necessarily a how-to, but a lot of the stuff that I'm doing um, it's really basic and I don't have real specific instructions. I'm sort of kind of winging it. Okay, so here I've got some poblano peppers, which I've got in this pan and I am blistering these. You can see um, this pan is on like medium high heat and I'm just cooking these in this dry pan and as soon as they get good and blistered, these are about done, I'm transferring them into this bowl here, which I'm keeping covered so that they'll sweat and basically what that is resulting in is for these to be really soft um, and I'll be able to easily get the skins off of them once they've sweat like this. I'm gonna just do this with my hands and um, I'm gonna layer them in this jar and then cover them with oil. 
and essentially that'll keep in my fridge for a few months and they're just roasted peppers which I can use that oil and things like dressings and marinades um, I can chop up the peppers and use those in dressings in quiche on pizza uh, in pasta basically it's just a really versatile way to preserve peppers and today what I'm doing is like just cutting these in strips like this so that they can lay relatively flat in this pan this would go faster on a grill um, or if you have a gas stove to just like be able to do it like on the open flame because you could really blister the skins really well that way but it's raining so I can't uh, put them on the grill right now and I don't have a gas stove so improvising and over here I've got all of these now I'm separating out the jalapenos and uh, serranos and these are going to be pickled and candied here are these ahi pineapple peppers which are kind of uh, fruity I'm going to ferment these into a hot sauce and I'm thinking that these chili chalacas I'll probably go ahead and roast those as well I think those would be good because they're kind of Swedish and I'm still separating out this giant pile some of these got too soft so they're gonna have to go uh, in the compost so quite unfortunately uh, my range hood is broken and so it is spicy here. <laughs> it's like but uh, poblano peppers are not even that spicy, but it is definitely like in the air. Uh, the rest of my family has cleared out of here because it's it's pretty rough. But this, <laughs> this, it's spicy in here, huh? Spicy in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like coughing and sneezing. I'm like, just go back to your room. Mom's doing something dangerous. <laughs> Hi, I'm coming. Now, the other thing I'm doing today is pickling some cucamelons. I've got quite a few cucamelons here that uh, we went out and picked the other day. Actually, the day after the frost because the plant had not, I guess, succumbed yet. So they're still good. The basic like brine recipe that I always start with when making like quick pickles and for cucamelons, the little Mexican sour gherkins. Um, if you've ever grown those before, you know they're like, they're kind of thin skinned and really soft inside. They almost like pop like a grape in your mouth whenever you bite down on them. And being so delicate, I've never tried to can those before because I don't think that they would really hold up to the heat that's required for canning and so I've only ever made quick pickles out of those which is basically where you take something and you put it in a brine and then put it in the fridge and eat it after you know you give it a you can eat it as soon as a couple of days and it's just gonna get stronger with flavor over over time with cucamelons that's all I've ever done and basically like the brine that I use my goodness it is the air in here is like <sighs> To open a window. <laughs> we'll just be cold, but at least we'll be able to breathe. Okay, so uh, quick pickle brine. One cup of vinegar, apple cider vinegar is what I usually use, so you're looking at like 5% acidity, just basic vinegar. Uh, one cup of water, and I like to use my like filtered water out of my Berkey filter. And then uh, one tablespoon of kosher salt. And that's basically like the quick pickle brine that I use. And you can use that on like green beans. Like I really like noodle beans pickled. Pickle, obviously cucumbers, like your basic traditional pickles. Carrots, you can do carrots that way by peeling them and slicing them thin. Uh, you can pickle squash or make like zucchini pickles. The base line. Cup of water, cup of vinegar, tablespoon of kosher salt. Uh, if you want to, and what I always do is I go crazy adding stuff, add in herbs, cloves of garlic, uh, crushed red pepper. You can add peppers in to make your pickles spicier. And that's what I'm going to do with these cucamelons. So basically it's going to be just washing those down and then creating that brine. You just boil it um, on the stove and with whatever you're going to put in there. You put your vinegar and your water and your salt. If you want to add sugar, if you're going to add any of those herbs or spices or any of that, you bring it to a boil and then pour it into clean jars 
with your produce that you're pickling. And that's what I'm gonna do with those. And then you just stick in the fridge and eat it after a couple days. This is definitely not one of those days where I'm vlogging step by step. It's been a couple hours, I've gotten a lot done, and I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm doing. And you know, I realize that this is not like a how-to, but I do think that there's value in saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. And I will put links below to where I'm finding the directions to do this stuff on. For instance, um, I found a recipe for fermented hot sauce. And in this jar, there are all of those ahi pineapple peppers here, um, as well as some other peppers that are in here, just a few different ones that I added for color. Like this, this dark spot, that's a purple bell pepper, which I wanted this to be a little milder. There's an onion, there's some garlic, and a carrot. And all of this is sliced up in here, uh, and that's gonna ferment and then it'll be blended and it'll be a hot sauce. And then here are my roasted peppers. I'm about to stick these in the fridge. I left them out so I could show you. And these are just those roasted poblanos covered in oil. Here also I've got, uh, this is actually fire cider that I started, it's been a few days ago now that this has been fermenting. I will put a link down below to this video as well. I've got a video about making fire cider. I still have a bunch of peppers to get through and I haven't done the cucumelons yet. But I did chop all of these guys and these are all going to be candied. I'll put a link down below for that. And those I'm going to can in these beautiful little wet jars, which um, I have some smaller ones also, and I may even can some of them in those. Uh, these jars are a little more on the expensive side. I really like them, and I've done a video about these. But uh, my thinking is with these candied jalapenos in really pretty jars that those will make good Christmas gifts. They have to... Uh, they have to sit for four weeks before you eat them. So that's why I'm getting all that stuff down now because it's a really good way for me to give something out of my garden from my house. You want to play a game? You've been waiting patiently, huh? Are we playing Are we playing Chinese checkers or are we playing tic-tac-toe? Chinese checkers. Chinese checkers. Got my trusty sidekick here helping me out with all my kitchen work. You setting it up? Purple. Ready to mix. <laughs> She does like green, but we can't do the green because it's messed up. There's missing Yeah, boots. a couple of the green pieces are missing. There's no missing boots. Thank you for picking green for me first, Ben. You knew that was my favorite color, didn't you? Why? Because she likes it. Look, how? I'm waiting right now on the dishwasher to wrap up so I can run um, my jars through there. One of the things that... Um, I'll deal with on days like this when I'm trying to do kitchen days is I'm usually trying to do other things as well. So there's a lot of multitasking and then I'll come up on like not having had the forethought to get that stuff ready now. So I'm having to just wait. That's okay. I'm gonna play Chinese checkers. I hope that somehow this inspired some some of you guys. Maybe you got some ideas on what to do with your harvest or you know you'll know what to do next year. It's kind of an interesting thing whenever you start growing food because you really do have to figure out how to use it. And then on top of that, you, I mean, it takes some forethought and like planning and being honest with yourself on what you're actually going to use. So when I'm looking through all these wonderful recipes, I have to say, are we really gonna eat that? Like, are we really gonna get through that? And um, you know, make choices accordingly. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Um, I bless you until next time.